Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the latest installment of SFI Live with me, Jay Evans. I'll introduce the guys in just a moment. This webinar is slightly different. Um, we are introducing you to a couple of new, oh, not new, but a couple of members of the team. Uh, so you'll meet a couple of BDMs throughout this webinar. So we'll be switching them in and out. Um, we're going to be going through the reasons why you should work with Saffron for Intermediaries or how Saffron for Intermediaries is different to other lenders. So Quite a lot going on in this one, quite a lot switching out, but we do really want to see your questions. So please use the chat box now at any point uh, to ask any questions. We're going to be going through a variety of products, including Expert Buy to Let, uh, Limited Company Buy to Let, Self Employed and Contractor, Self Building Renovations, and JBSP. Uh, but first, I'm going to grill my first two guests who you see on a regular basis. So, Tony, I'll give you this chance. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yes, good morning, everybody. My name is Tony Hall. I'm head of mortgage sales here at Saffron. Uh, I'm just coming up to my first year with society next month, which has flown by. Um, but I've got over over 30 years experience uh, within financial services and a large part of that in the specialist lending market. Wonderful. And Holly, your turn. Yeah, so I'm the intermediary team leader at Saffron and I look after our telephone BDMs. We are currently a team of five and um, we help with all the inbound calls, cases in progress, and we've also got our new, um, two new field base, one of them that you'll meet today. Um, I've been at Saffron for six years now and in the uh, mortgage team for five. So yeah, it is flown by, but yes, that's what I do. Welcome, guys. So this, as I say, is fully interactive, so we will accept any questions at any time. If they don't suit the area we're currently working in, we'll move on and we'll get to the questions at the end of the webinar. We're here for the next hour. Um, question accepted. There is suddenly now, hopefully, a poll live. A uh, quick question uh, on the poll. We do have a handout for you a bit later on, and we're talking about very quickly about a survey. Just to let you know at the start of this webinar, this is our last one of this season, so we're taking a break in July. And we'll be returning again in August with our next season, which we will obviously keep you informed about. And also, July, we'll see the first Saffron for Intermediaries podcast uh, coming your way. So we'll give you details of that as and when we know more. So um, the poll is now live. Feel free to um, do that at any time. And let's move on. So um, I'm going to grill you two first before we introduce the other two, because uh, you two are pros now, so we know what was going on. Um, so, Tony, let's talk. And we use this phrase a hell of a lot. Common sense lending why don't you explain to those that haven't worked with us or haven't done a webinar before um what that means um i mean really it's a, it's it's about a human being making a decision rather than a you know a computer so every single um underwriting decision is made by a human being an underwriter in our case obviously we do have a system that will very quickly tell you if there's something that we would we wouldn't look at whether it was a human or not and we'll we'll, we'll decline those as soon as possible but anything that's got uh, any merit will come and be viewed by an underwriter and then from there our policy allows our underwriters to take a common sense view so we have a flexible lending policy which has got it's got black and white areas so it's there is very clear what we can and can't do but a lot of it is discretionary which means that the underwriter has their own personal uh, discretion to choose when making that decision. And even then beyond that, we have something called exceptions as well. So if something's even not in policy, but an underwriter can't use their discretion, but would still like to do it, they can make an exception and get that requested as well. So that's what we mean by common sense. It's really present us with a case as, as you would see it, and it will get viewed and understood by by an underwriter in the same way. Brilliant. And to go on with that, something we've discussed many times before is this kind of bespoke offer. So if somebody doesn't necessarily fit the exact criteria, the duty or manual process, you are able to kind of adjust your rates and certain things. So do you want to explain that in a bit more detail? for the guys? Yeah, certainly. So we, we have a, a bespoke pricing model, which allows um, our underwriters to, so if we, I'll give you an example. We'll do a recent one. We, we do up to two million on self-build now, uh, which we'll hear more about later on. So I won't ruin anybody's uh, fun on that. I'll probably just have. So sorry, guys, whoever's doing that bit. Um, but we had a, an inquiry the other day for one for nearly three million, which is outside of our policy uh, in terms of the product. But we were able to look at it and, 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 and do it 
we loaded the interest rate accordingly because it's outside of our, our limits. So it was a great deal to do. So that's one example. So basically, wherever we've got a, a case that doesn't quite meet our policy or our risk appetite within the product it's, it came in on, we can say, we'll do that, but actually we want to load the, the, pre, the, the interest rate or the fees just so that we get what we need to get from it. And we're really happy to do that. So in any case that doesn't quite fit our policy, you should still give the guys a ring. Brilliant. Um, that's covered that bit. Tony, have a breather. Holly, it's your turn. We're quick fire questioning, Holly, at the moment, because we're going to go with the most popular income questions that we've had throughout the series. So here they come, quick fire. So quick response, well, not too quick, because we'll give you time to read the next question. Can you consider <laughs> secondary income, bonuses and commissions, and to what level? Yes, yeah, so there's a variety of secondary income that we can take. So, for example, second jobs, if they've held it for an applicant's held it for six months and they haven't, um, they're not working over 60 hours, then we can look to take both incomes um, into account for affordability, bonus and commissions. A standard, if they're guaranteed, it's 100 percent. And if they're non-standard, it's 50. But if they've got a good track history, then we can look at taking a higher percentage of their bonus or commission. So, again, if you've got one of those cases and you need a bit more of the percentage taken into account, just give us a call and we can chat through to see what experience that they've had or how much we can or can't take. So yeah, we've got a variety of different um, options. Here comes that horrible F word that we all hate, furlough. Um, it's obviously due to end on the 1st of July, even with the extension of the restrictions. So, but it's gonna be on everyone's income for a very long time, uh, certainly an application perspective. Um, how will you be able to work with brokers to get applications to approval, Holly? Yeah, so I mean, for f the furlough scheme, we never changed our criteria even during the pandemic what we were looking at is if they took out a mortgage whilst they're still on furlough would that have any impact on affordability with them now the majority of people that were on that scheme are now back to work so we may see it on a previous pay slip but as long as we've got a return to work letter in the first pay slip at full pay we're happy yeah. um you know and if they're going back over the next few weeks it's just worth giving us a call and, and chatting it through lovely your last one, Holly, gifted deposits. This comes up at every single webinar, pretty much, um, because you accept on all products, I understand. So can you explain this briefly to the guys that are watching? Yes. So for us at the moment, we do accept gifted deposits. They do have to come from a family member, but that can be parents, uh, grandparents, aunts and uncles. Uh, and that includes also foster and adoptive parents, too um and grand foster and adoptive grandparents as well so we can consider a variety we also do um vendor deposit for when you're bought purchasing from the landlord um if they've been living in the property and the landlord wants to give them sort of gifted equity within we can consider that scenario too within our policy wonderful and that's it on the income questions we're moving on very quickly uh tony i'm gonna put this to you but it's to both of you uh what improvements have you made to your processes um tony maybe you can answer this in the time that you've been with with saffron well we've done an awful lot uh over the last year uh, but we've really only started you know we've got a corporate a key corporate objectives have service that stands out uh and you know standing out for the right reasons and you know uh, as of late because of a a huge volume of work our service levels have dropped slightly and we're very conscious of that but we're working hard um, to get to get back to where we would like to be we do make it clear on our website exactly where we are so it allows brokers to understand what experience they should get uh, at the moment but we're looking very much to do bring those back but you know quite a few of the changes we've made so we, we changed when we instruct the valuation uh, to earlier in the process and that's actually saved five days on each application which is quite you know it's a considerable amount of time so that's helped um, we've made a lot of changes we don't we no longer ask for paper ID identification and verification documents we, we, we've switched on our electronic method so you only get asked for that if we can't find you we've reduced the number of bank statements that you need in certain areas and I expect a lot of this to reduce further because we're going through a review at the moment uh, probably the, the the best the biggest change uh, in recent weeks is that we've changed our documents to editable PDFs so before uh, our, our brokers had to download a document fill it in by hand scan it and then and then upload it to the folder to the to the portal they still have to upload it all but now they can complete it on the screen 
on uh, uh, rather than having to download it and uh, you know save it and send it to us. So that's a big saving, and that's across all as many of the. Um, I think it's probably Holly can confirm probably about seven or eight of the forms we use uh, for supporting evidence are now on an editable PDF. And it's down to the broker. You can still fill it in by hand if you want. You don't have to do it uh, on the on the computer. But it just you know we had feedback from from a, a, a trusted broker who gave us their experience of working with us. And we thought, you're right, let's sort this. And we sorted it really quickly. So it's a real example of what we're really keen on because we do a lot of surveys with brokers. We ask for a lot of feedback because we want to understand how we can get better. And what we've just done is a classic example of listening and reacting straight away. Wonderful. Uh, we just about to introduce our first uh, guest to join us for the BDM team. But before we do that, Tony, why don't you talk to us quickly about the additions to the team? Because that is a, a big change over the last few months, isn't it? Yeah, as Holly said, when I, when I joined um, last July, we had two and a half staff in intermediary. Uh, we're now up to uh, eight, including me. Um, so we're, you know, with the, again, it's back to that commitment of service that stands out. We recognize that our, our brokers want to see more of us and hear more of us. So we're growing the team size to enable that to happen. So recent additions, you'll see you'll see Simon in a minute. So Simon's joined us uh, as a BDM in the South. Uh, I'll let you, he'll give you more details about him. So I won't spoil that one. And then Phil Lawford has joined us as BDM covering the North at the moment. And Phil, a lot of people will know Phil, he's been around almost as long as me, bless him. Um, but a massive amount of experience and brings an awful lot of experience and connections to the to the society and, and is helping us drive the way forward so it's brilliant and then within Holly's team uh, we, we've got a few a couple of uh, additions there we've got Lindsay that's joined as a business development um, uh, administrator and a lot of brokers know and love her already because we get loads of five-star reviews about her and we've also got Raji that joined us from internally to come and work uh, again as a business development administrator uh, and again, she's getting rave reviews as well. So the guys are really focused on um, ensuring that everybody that needs us gets a great experience. Uh, but we will, you know, I do ask for feedback all the time to tell us when we're not, or even when we are, because it's great to learn, but also congratulate where we can. <laughs> Lovely. Excuse me. <laughs> Typical that came at that time. So we don't further ado, then let's introduce Simon. Simon, do you want to pop your camera on for us? Um, yeah. So I'm just going to join us in one second. Just very quickly, there is a question in, um, and I'll ask it now before we get too far. Uh, to Holly, are you a soft footprint at dip stage? Yes, we are a soft footprint at decision and principle stage. And just for a bit of background as well on that one, we use experience as our search agency. And we also require applicants to have a minimum credit score on um, experience of 600. Wonderful. I have no further ado. Simon, welcome. Uh, why don't you introduce yeah. yourself to the audience before we start firing questions at you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks, Jay. So I'm Simon. Um, I've been with Saffron Building Society now for around nine years. So a little while, um, predominantly in the branch network. Uh, but now I've moved across to mortgages uh, with my current role as a business development manager uh, since started in March. So just about three months. And um, as Tony said, yep, covering the, uh, the south of the UK at the moment. Wonderful. So Simon's here to talk about, I'm sure he loves it, x buy to let and limited company buy to let So we're going to go through um, a series of questions we've been asked regularly. If you have any questions on x buy to let or limited company buy to let as we start to answer these ones, pop them in the chat box because you've only got 10 minutes before we move on to our next subject. So get those questions in. So Simon, let's start with limited company buy to let Can you explain, limited company, just explain the, um, the product to the audience? Yeah, of course. So our limited company buy to let proposition allows um, landlords operating via a limited company to purchase or remortgage a property. Lovely. Nice brief. like that. So quick fire questions. So quick responses. Be as, be as um, thorough as you can do, but in the short answer. Do you accept HMOs? So HMOs is not currently an area that we are accepting applications on at the moment, but it is under review uh, following feedback from our broker community. So uh, watch this space, I'd say on that one, it's something we're looking into. And um, if we do, we'll communicate it via our, um, our correspondence. So if you're not signed up already, please do on the portal um, and you receive any emails from us. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, on to the tenancy agreement. What sort of tenancy agreement does the new landlord have to have in place? So it's a single family AST uh, with a minimum to run of six months and a maximum of 24 months. Nice and quick like that. And do you accept first time buyers, first time landlords? Yes, we do. So first time buyers and first time landlords are acceptable on our limited company buy to let range as across all of our, our, um, our buy to let range as well. So no, no stipulations on that. It's worth noting, we're not talking about buy to let products generally today because we've covered them a lot before. But if you do need to find out about them, I have put a link to the Saffron for Intermediaries uh, website. So go through there and you can find out details about those. So let's move on. Oh, one last question on limited company. Sorry. How should the limited company business operations be registered? So uh, it needs to be done uh, purchased via an SPV. Um, so there's no stipulations in terms of how long the SPV has to be registered. So we can take day day one SPVs, providing that you can uh, give us a certificate of incorporation. So we can go straight from day one and consider as long as we've got that. Wonderful. We're going to move on to the expat buy to let range, highly popular. <clears throat> um, so does the application, uh, sorry, the applicant have to be an existing homeowner with buy to let? I think we've answered this already, haven't we? So with expats, so they have to be, a, can they be a first time buyer, first time landlord? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, with expat, they can be a first time buyer and first time landlord uh, in order for us to consider. So lovely, very, very flexible. Okay, can the expat purchase a rent to a member of their family? They can. Um, we'd consider it to be a regulated buy to let. Um, so we would assess affordability based on um, sterling income. So we wouldn't be able to take any foreign income. Uh, but yeah, it's something that we'd be able to consider. Lovely. Uh, do you have any country restrictions? Yes, at the moment we're not currently lending to countries in the EEA, the European Economic Area. We've been practicing that one. Um, but other than that, we're very flexible. So we do lend to the vast majority of countries. But if you've got any countries that you know are a little bit quirky, we haven't perhaps lent to before, um, pick up the phone, pick up an email, give us a shout, and we'll be able to run through that with you. But yeah, like I say, very flexible. Lovely. Do you offer limited company expat buy to lets? Not currently, um, but again, it's something that we're, we're looking at. Um, I know Tony's keen on sort of looking at our proposition and our portfolio and expanding it to cover as much as possible. But again, it's probably a watch this space one. And very last quick fire question. Would you consider a portfolio landlord and what are the limits? Yep. So portfolio landlords are, um, are acceptable at Saffron. So we class a portfolio landlord with, as anyone that's got four buy to let properties in the background. So maximum exposure with Saffron would be um, 10 properties or one and a half millions worth of lending. But there's no uh, restrictions on properties held elsewhere. So they can have as many as they want in the background with other lenders. Uh, we do just ask that the maximum portfolio, the LTV maximum rather, is 75%. And each property is covering 125% of its pay rate, both individually and collectively. Okay, Questions are coming in thick and fast for this. So I'm going to quickly fire through. Don't worry, Simon, not going to be on the spot because your first webinar, so I will go to Tony and Holly as well. Uh, so Daryl said a, B, B, um, a bicycle case um, did go through, but the service levels were not acceptable. Has this improved? We are aware of this. Tony, do you want to take the answer to that? Yeah, uh, I, as I said, we, we extremed uh, uh, experiences. Get my teeth in. Significant high volumes of applications, Daryl, and um, unfortunately, we, we we haven't been and weren't uh, delivering at the service level we want. It is fully understood, and we we appreciate everybody's understanding for that. And uh, we are, uh, you can already see the service levels are returning to where they should be. Uh, but we hold our hands up and say, yeah, we've learned some lessons from this, so we we, we shouldn't fall into that trap again. Brilliant. Thank you, Tony. John, um, increased inquiries for expat holiday lets. Will Saffron consider these in the future? Holly? Apologies, I had to get myself off mute, as of course, you can never guarantee that a helicopter isn't going to go over your house <laughs> <laughs> during the live webinar. So uh, holiday lets is one of the ones that is under review at the moment because we don't do them based on UK based landlords or overseas. So it's something that we're looking into. We know that the holiday let um, market is booming at the moment. We are late to the party on that one, but it is under product review to see if it's something we can add to our um, range of buy-to-lets. 
Lovely, thank you. And first time buyer, first time landlord. There's only exception for a limited company, please. Uh, Goldwag, um, that's actually across the buy to let range. Um, so I can answer that one just through my own knowledge. And then David Sugden has said, um, did you just say that you, can, you can't consider foreign income as acceptable for buy to let, even though you do expat products? Expats are paid in different currencies. Tony or Holly, do you want to say go on, Simon? Yes, um, sorry, specifically for uh, regulated expat buy to let. So um just just those who wouldn't be able to consider foreign income no worries and with, thing, oh, sorry, Holly. no i was just going to say and with the expat buy to lets for the standard product ranges is that when you're keying it through the system they need to have sterling equivalent of twenty five thousand pounds so if they're earning in a foreign currency just convert it on today's exchange rate and then key that through on the system so it's the sterling equivalent just to remind everybody it. Just a reminder for everybody of where to register, and it's worth registering to keep up to date with what's going on with Saffron for Intermediaries. But just a reminder that is in the chat room, Saffron for Intermediaries.co.uk. Get yourselves on there, get registered, get on the portal, get have a look around and see what advancements have happened. It's a brand new website last year. Um, so have a look around, and all products that we don't discuss today are available on there. So that link is in your chat. Simon, thank you, and welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the team, and no doubt next season when we start back in August, we'll see more of your face. So thank you so much. And, um, and just us three again. So we'll be seeing another BDM very, very shortly. But before we do that, Holly, it's your turn for quick buy press product questions. And we're moving over to self-employed and contractor this time. So Stafford offers specific self-employed and contracting products. Can you give us a little bit more detail about them? Just bear in mind, uh, as part of the poll, half of the viewers haven't worked with Saffron before. So uh, we are talking to quite a lot of people who haven't had the pleasure of working with you yet. So moving on. Yeah. So explain the products, Holly. Yeah. OK, so we'll start with the self-employed. So we have um, criteria surrounding if the applicant has less than three years of accounts, so only one or two years of accounts, they can go on our self-employed product range. That's currently restricted to 80% loan to value. However, it's available to first time buyers. And what we'll need is the applicant to be able to provide an accountant's projection to show that they're working at the same level, if not more profitable in the year ahead. And um, that ranges under our special situations um, area of our website. The system is automatically built for income to take the latest year's figures if there's been a year on year increase. And if there's been a year on year decrease, again, we take the latest year's figures for affordability with the three years of accounts just to go on the standard product range. And that, again, if there's been a fluctuation in profits over three years, you will be looking at an average. Now, our contractor is built very similarly. So it's for anybody on a short term or fixed term contract, CIS workers and also people working on a contract via an umbrella company. It is available to first time buyers and it is restricted to 80% loan to value. The applicant must have a minimum of two years industry experience, but only required to have three months contracting experience. There needs to be a reasonable time left on the existing contract. Uh, if it's due to expire or renew during the application processes, we're just going to want to see evidence of that. And our product doesn't restrict you just having one contract. We work with a variety of different contractors, people in the healthcare industry, film or TV, that are either on multiple contracts at the same time or short term contracts that are only, you know, TV and film. They could only be on it for a week, 10 days at a time, depending on what they're doing. So um, we're really flexible. And the income calculation is the day rate times the day's work times 48 for affordability. So that is a generous uh, calculation for income on that, too. Lovely. Um, let's talk about the paperwork a bit here. There's two two questions we can mould into one here. Um, obviously, there's there's quite a lot of paperwork. Is it necessary to accept the application? And what will be required? Do you think you've covered most of it? Is there anything that would surprise the brokers in the application process for these mortgages? Well, one thing I say that we have improved on is actually the uh, reduction in the documents that we need. We used to require, for example, uh, bank accounts for all accounts held for three or six months. And we've actually reduced that now. So it's just the main um, income and expenditure bank account that we would need. We will need to see business bank statements for self-employed applicants, uh, but we're just reducing the documents to obviously try and improve that process going through. So um, one of the key things that is a bit unusual with our contractor product, for example, is that we do require a copy of their CV. 
uh, just to really outline their history, but that can even include gaps. So one of the things that we do like to talk about with our contractors is it doesn't matter if they have gaps of their employment, as long as there's an explanation as to what they were doing, then it's something that we can potentially consider further. We have done a really helpful guide on our website. So if you go to the home page, scroll down to the middle of the page, there's a quick link section and the very first, um, sorry, the second from the bottom links is supporting documents and supplementary information. Click in there and everything you'll need will be in there. So it'll have all your editable forms. It has a list of document requirements. And I'd say at decision and principle stage, you don't need the works, but the benefit that you've got is you can put in, um, you can add notes to your decision in principle, you can upload a few documents. So if there's anything you think the underwriters need to know, you need to paint a picture to maybe explain you know, how they've been affected by the pandemic, what they've been up to, why there's been a gap of employment for contractors, you have that space and ability to do. And that's where our manual underwriting really comes into its own because we can have a look at that for you. Now, we're not going to fully assess the whole documents that you upload, but it gives us a snapshot into the app. Wonderful. Very last question on that subject, Holly, and then I'll give you a breather. Um, some top tips for brokers with regards to these products and getting them through. I think it's just um, maybe going back to my previous point is just painting the picture. If they are unusual, if there is something that's happened to them over the last few years, especially with the self-employed applicants, whether they've been a bit affected by the pandemic, have they taken the government grants? Have they taken the bounce back loans? Let us know. You know, I was um, on another presentation earlier and I was talking about self-employed, you know, hairdressers. They haven't been working during the pandemic, we know. But since they've been back in the last three months, they'll have been trading, you know, over and above. They've got a lot of work to catch up on. So it's it's taking a view and seeing you know, where they've been at. Did they work between the two lockdowns, that kind of thing. So it's just paint a picture. But we're always the BDM team are always happy to chat through a case. So if there's anything you need us to have a look, you know, we're all we all know our way around a set of accounts. Some of us. Um, some of us, it's like, oh, but no, all of us will be able to help. So just give us a call and we're happy to chat through, especially with like contracts as well. If there's anything that looks unusual, um, yeah, give us a shout. And one of the things I would say as a tip for any processing of a case is when you upload your documents, if you clearly label them, that is a massive help to our processing team because they know which applicant it relates to and what document that they are looking at. So it means your signing off process for documents is a lot quicker. So that note box is key, isn't it? That's no box is going to get that. Yeah. <clears throat> Jay, I'll just add in another top tip there is just explaining how our processing works. So when you submit your case, you get obviously a, a list of uh, checklist requirements, we call it. OK, and those are the documents that we need in order to move the case on. We will not move that case forward until we've got all those. So the top tip is get all that stuff together and get it through in one go. And then we can check it once and then it get it into our underwriters as soon as possible. And once we've got all those documents, we then instruct the valuation. Okay. So you can you can drip feed it. That's fine. But don't expect the, t t the turnarounds that you want if you do that. That would be my best tip for people. Lovely. Thanks, Tony. Um, we've had a question come in on that, Holly. How do you work out income on day rate contract contractors? Yes, yeah, so the day rate calculation is the day rate times the day's work times 48. Okay. And do you set a debt to income ratio? No, there's not one as standard that is listed. It's more about looking at it in the background. So we have, as well as an experience score, we also have a consumer indebtedness index score. And if that comes back at a certain point level, that's when it either refers or automatically declines. It just depends on the level of debt. Now, if the debt is decreasing because they're doing a debt consolidation case, then, of course, the system is smart enough to know to refer that over. So um, there's not a set debt to income ratio, but our system is built to look at the consumer indebtedness score. And with debt consolidation cases, whilst we're on the topic, uh, one of the uh, key things that Safra do offer is um, debt consolidation up to 90% loan to value. Okay, lovely. Very quickly, we're going to jump back with Holly because you're a bit of an expert. So say bringing Simon all the way back, <laughs> yeah. resting and getting over his experience. Um, would you consider a buy to let for a client who's moving abroad to say Spain or Portugal? 
No, so because they are moving to uh, Spain or Portugal, they both fall within the EEA region. Uh, so we have had to restrict lending to expats in those countries. So if they're moving outside of the EEA region, definitely give us a call. Um, they'd need to be overseas for a minimum of three months for us first to be able to consider. Uh, but yes, we are restricting in the EEA region. Thank you, Robert. I hope that answers your question. Sorry, Tony. I'm just, I'm just looking at Rob's question. It was a let to buy. Oh, I didn't know. Not a let. Oh, so let to buy, they'd have to be overseas for us to be able to consider them as expats. So um, we wouldn't be able to do it until they'd moved. Okay. Sorry, that was my fault. I misread the question. Um, and Kevin, very last one. Uh, do you accept any level of adverse? And if so, can you please explain? Yes. So our adverse policy is under review. Um, but we go... Uh, I'll start with uh, mortgage arrears. So they cannot have more than one missed payment in the last 12 months and no more than two in the last 24 months. For um, unsecured arrears, there's no more than two occurrences in the last 24 months. And then with our CCJs and defaults, they must be settled and we will go by the settlement date rather than the registration date. And it does depend on the value as to when we can consider them. So if they're less than 250, they need to be settled between one to 12 months. If they are between 251 and 500, you're looking at uh, 13 to 24 months. And anything over that in total needs to be settled for two years. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, just Sorry, Jay, just very quickly, I'll come in on that one. Yeah. Um, as, as Holly quickly mentioned, that our, our adverse... Um, policy is under review again our whole policy is under review and by the end of july we should have a much improved policy so we are we are um cognizant of the fact that the level of adverse and defaults and minor blips is happening as a result of the pandemic and we want to ensure that we can still support brokers and their customers who fall into that gap we feel that we're a little bit on the wrong side so we are looking to strengthen our policy to make it easier you know, we recognise that people make mistakes and we don't want to hold that against them. So I want us to be a bit more appreciative of that within our policy. So I'm fingers crossed that will come through and we'll, we'll communicate that as soon as we can. Lovely. Just as a result of the poll so far, guys, just for everyone's, um, everyone's benefit, 54% of people haven't worked with Saffron before. So uh, we'll get around to everyone's questions. So those of you that haven't worked with Saffron before, if you would like to submit a question here we'll get to it towards the end so we we concentrate on the products for the next 20 minutes 15 minutes and then we'll move over to any questions that don't fit in those categories so we're just waiting for sophie to join us um and then she'll be taking us through the self-build and renovations hopefully she's got her email will be joining us shortly um uh so let's just quickly go through the questions we have in place no, nope, that's fine. We've done all those. So again, if you want to submit your questions, please go into the chat box, uh, submit a question. You can do it privately if you don't want the whole chat room to do it. There is an option to change that to private. So um, change it to private if you so wish. Um, you can also follow Saffron Fringe Reviews on LinkedIn. In the chat box is the link for LinkedIn. I'm now going to post to Twitter. Give us a follow. Uh, it's the most up-to-date information on new products and things that are happening. So the channels are very, very active. So um, do feel free to click on those and give us a follow. Um, Sophie should be joining us, but it looks like that's not going to be happening for a little while. So while we're waiting for it, um, I'm just going to send every viewer at the moment a document, which is the contact details for the BDM team. So any new business inquiries uh, for the North and the South, contact details for Phil and Simon are on there. So I'm now sharing that with you all. You can download, download that to your computer and use it as your leisure. Um, while we're waiting for Sophie, um, Adiola has asked, if, uh, do you offer help to buy products? No. No, no at the not moment. currently. Any plans? Not, <laughs> so, uh, um, it, yeah, it's it's again, it's, it, it's always under review uh, uh, within our product mix. So we don't currently do it. We're looking at how the schemes all play out because they change a lot. Um, we're looking at the new help to build product schemes come out as well. Uh, as, a, as an expert self build lender, that's a key one for us. So we're looking at that closely. Um, and we are looking at the first home scheme as well as to how we can support uh borrowers with that one if i've got a meeting later today to move that on um so we don't do help to buy but we've got lots of other stuff planned 
Wonderful. We're still waiting on Sophie. I don't know if she's having technical issues because we can't talk to her while we're on here. So we're going to move on um, to uh, the next section and we'll let Sophie pick up uh, when she arrives. So while we're waiting, uh, Holly, I'm going to pass over to you. Uh, but I'm sure Tony will jump in and give you a hand if need be. Let's move on to, no. <laughs> to self-build and renovation, do we? So for the sake of viewers, again, can you explain what the self-build products are and what they're used for? Yes, so our self-build products um, have recently expanded. So Tony touched on it right at the very beginning. So um, our self-build is for um, all different types of conversions, renovations, plots that you're building up from the ground upwards, knock down rebuilds. The list is sort of endless as to what we can consider. And it's really for helping people to build their dream property for them to live in um and we offer it in a variety of different ways so um there's two products that are available on standard loans up to a million and two products available from a million to two million and uh, uh we can help with the purchase or remortgage to draw equity out of the property we can then help with um build costs they're lent in stage payments and they're lent in arrears and our loan to values vary from 75 percent of the gross development to 80 percent of the gross development value um i'd say that probably self-build is one of our flagship products um is you know we can consider a variety of different types of projects but we can also consider a variety of different types of construction so you could be looking at your modern methods of construction so uh, steel frame houses huff houses passive house methods We've considered properties that look like tree houses, properties with lots of windows that are, you know, two storey, kind of mo really modern looking. And as long as that um, property's got the BOPAS, BBA or BRE accreditation and is valid for 65 years, then it's something that we can consider. I feel like I've skipped through all of your questions there on that. I think you may have done cheating rehearsals. I'm not going to figure yeah. out which question um, we're going to ask next. I'll just sorry because I'm, de I'm desperate for everybody to meet Sophie. I know she's having problems, but she's I've got, I've got a note for her here. That's why I was I wasn't not listening to Hull because clearly I'd always listen to Holly. But um, I was trying to read this note and multitask, which is never great for us, especially when I can't see it. Um, some about uh, it looks like she's got an admin set in, and that's why she can't get on because there's okay. viewers uh, admin so already. If you just click on the speak hand speak button uh, on your near your chat room, click on speak, and I'll be able to invite you in that way. So I see you're in, still in the chat room. So if you can hear me, click on the speak button and we'll pull you in. Thank I'm you. Sorry, to sorry, sorry in there. Fine. Uh, we've had a load of questions coming. Guys, the questions that are coming in, uh, we will get around to as we go on. So we're going back to sort of buy to let and arrears. So we will ask those at the end. Um, but Lisa has asked one that really is relevant to um, this section, Holly. So do we go do we go through build loan to get your self-build product? No. So with Saffron, all our products are available directly. Um, so currently the ones that are offered, you can apply through on our system and it will be available um, to pick up from sourcing systems as well. But now you come to us directly and once the case has completed, um, this is one of the sort of things our underwriters keep hands on from start to finish because the build costs are lent in stage payments and they're lent in arrears it's that you um, will keep in contact with the customer until the build's been completed within 24 months. Um, so if we don't hear from a customer for say, uh, uh, b between stages, every three months we'll go for a progress report. So we like to keep hands on to ensure that the customer feels supported as the brokers have supported them up until completion. And then we will support them to complete that build and ensure that they, you know, they can move into their lovely completed dream property. Lovely. We're, getting, we're running out of time in this section, so I'm going to ask you the final questions. Hopefully we'll have Sophie in by the time we get to JBSP. Um, the mortgage is subject to stage payments. Can you explain what this means? Yep. So our bill costs are all in stage payments and they're in arrears. Now, we used to have a set stage payment structure and um, that doesn't work when we're taking on a variety of different products. So now we offer flexible stage payments. So um, as part of your decision in principle, you'll complete a supplementary information sheet. And on there, your uh, broker will need to write down what they believe is the stage payments that the customer needs. So whether that would be um, foundations, eaves level, wind and water tie, and then internal fit out, 
it just depends on what they're looking for. Now, some people, if we're taking on a renovation midway through, they may only need an initial drawdown and one stage payment. But somebody that may need extra support, we've recently done one for a customer um, in the London area. They actually wanted a stage payment every month because they wanted us to be hands on. And that's how their builder requested the funds. So um, we've been able to help doing it that way. So there is a reinspection fee for every stage payment of £195 a time. Um, so it's just something to make the customer aware of. But yeah, they're flexible and we'll work, the underwriters will work with the um, with yourselves as brokers to suit the applicants and the project that they're doing at that time. Well, the next question Tony answered earlier, so we'll just go with, yes, you can contact us for over £2 million and we'll, we'll work on each project on a project by project basis. And we've also answered first time buyers, first time uh, buyer agency accepted on self-build, so we know that. And last question, custom builds, Holly, do you accept applications for those two? Yes, so our self-build not only covers self-build renovations, it also considers custom builds where the applicants are purchasing from a developer to uh, then build up the plot for them. So um, based on certain specifications. So yeah, custom build does fall into our self-build category and there is a different supplementary information sheet. So if you're bringing a custom build to us is to complete the custom build form rather than the self-build form. Again, that's in the supplementary documentation section, but it's also linked through on our product page too. So um, any problems finding or any questions that people have, just please give us a call. Okay, lovely. I've just accepted um, Sophie in. Have you had any more updates, Tony? Um, yeah, she's been struggling to see the link that it was there. She's she's been trying to press uh, speak and it's not not been working. No, I, I've just accepted her again. She'll put it through. So we'll all keep trying to get Sophie on, even if it's just for an introduction. Uh, towards the end, some of you may have seen her before. She has been on a previous webinar. But that does mean, sadly, Holly, I'm going to keep on you with JBSP. Um, but we've only got a short time for it, so I'll try and keep it as brief, and hopefully we can get Sophie in to do an introduction. Um, uh, in the meantime, Sophie, if you check your emails, I've just sent you a fresh link, uh, so that should accept your answer. There is one on your emails. So, again, for the sake of those 50% that have never worked with you before, Holly, explain the JB JBSP to us, please. Yep, so uh, JBSP stands for Joint Borrower Sole Proprietor in our terms, and it is available to it's our only product available to first time buyers at 95% loan to value. Now, it's designed for first time buyers that are struggling with affordability and they need a supporter to go on the mortgage with them to boost the um, her loan size available and able to get them into that first property. So we do have some uh, requirements um, on it. So the first time buyers must be able to, to cover 70% of the loan size applied for, and then the supporter then covers the 30% shortfall. Um, it's a nightmare to calculate. So we've really built a great uh, joint borrower sole proprietor calculator that's available on our website under the calculator section. You test the first time buyer's affordability to reach that 70% of the loan size that they want. And then if that if they can reach that level, it will then say next and you can then test the supporters affordability within that. Now, the supporter needs to be a close family member. So that can be um, aunts, uncles, parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters. Uh, and again, the adoptive and foster grandparents or parents as well. And um, the supporter can be no older than 70 at the time of application. However, the benefit with our JBSP product is that the term is not restricted by the supporter's age. So in effect, the first time buyer can have up to a 40 year term because what we're looking at is that they can remortgage and refinance to remove the support in the next five to 10 years as their salary increases and um, they can remove them. The stipulation for the supporter is that they must uh, be a home owner occupier and they also must receive independent legal advice because they will be liable for the mortgage should the first time buyers default on their payments. Okay, lovely, thank you. That's every question I have apart from- I'm so sorry, I knew no, I was sorry, doing it's it, good. I knew. You just went through the whole thing, you just <laughs> saved my life because typical live broadcasting, we're still trying to get Sophie in. And, um, and so we're running out of time. Very last question on that before we go on to the questions from the audience. It was what percentage of the mortgage will the, the FTB need to reach affordability criteria? So the actual first time so buyer. 
Yeah, so they'll be need to, need to be able to reach affordability of 70% of the loan size applying for, and then the supporter then covers the 30% shortfall. So nice and simple example, £100,000 loan amount, affordability for the first time buyer needs to be 70000 and then the supporter then needs to cover that 30000 shortfall. I'm glad that I could do the easy <laughs> explanation of that one as well. So, yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, that's covered products. So we're going to we're going to go to viewers' questions now. So if you have any questions, now's your time. You've got 14 minutes to get them in. Um, so good luck. I'm going to work through these questions. There'll be no specific order apart from the order they came in, uh, Holly and Tony. So I will let you pick whether you choose it. Quick question for Richard Williams. Oh, Do you goodness. offer shared ownership? Uh, we don't offer shared ownership. Again, as with quite a few of the things, it's under review currently. Uh, but no, it's not something that we currently have in our product range. Lovely. Alan has asked, on the question of mortgage arrears, are the missed payments Holly mentioned deemed as the highest status? So it's deemed on the occurrences. So how often that they show on the uh, credit report. So if it shows for two months in a row, that is two, two occurrences. Uh, do you accept overseas from Damon? Do you accept overseas deposits from expats for purchasing buy to lets in the UK? Yes, we do. A quick and simple answer. Lisa, do we go through build loan to. Oh, we asked this one. Sorry. Lisa, we've responded to that. So hopefully you remember the answer. I do remember the question. Daryl, I have a client that is looking to purchase a property from his father. The father is open to leaving equity in the product to gift to his son. Is this acceptable with Safra? Yes, so as well as gifted deposits, we do also accept gifted equity deposits um, from family members. Wonderful, Daryl, that's your answer. Over to Brian. Is the self-build available to first-time developers? I know the answer, but I'll let you get a chance to get it in. Yes, so our self-build is available to um, first-time buyers. We also, um, though we've not mentioned it today, we do have, if somebody's looking for development finance, so they're looking um, to build... Um, a set of plots or you know a multi-unit then we do have a development finance arm that's not sorry, something that uh, the BDM team deal with but we do have our development finance team that are available um, and their number I can give out as well if that's helpful um, which is 01799582886 so the last three digits are eight eight six at zero one seven double nine five eight two eight eight six and they'll be happy to talk through any development finance but if it's self-build and for the applicants to live in speak to the bdm team and we'll run it through with you just worth pointing out that if you want to see development finance section of saffron you will need to go to the saffron building site website which is website which is saffronbs.co.uk uh, it's featured on there so there's a nice big section there with contact details so yeah pop over to the website to have a look at development finance um just before we carry on we do offer cpd um certificates for your personal development um if you would like a certificate please pop a yes please or can i have a certificate into the chat room anybody that does that will get the certificate sent out to you they should be with you by the end of the week um so yeah if you could just pop your name in the chat room and the guys will pull out your details from when you registered and we'll get those sent over to you okay moving on to the next question um can you guys lend to professional sportsmen and if so how do you consider the income holly Yes. So we have done previously considered professional sports people and their income. The key thing is if they've got a, a lower retirement age, so say, for example, with footballers, it's usually around the age of 35. It's what their forward plan is. So do they have their coach, coaching, coaching qualifications um, and you know what is their forward story basically after retirement? So, you know, is that the plan that they're going to? What you know, what are they looking to do? Um, and just get a bit more of a picture of them. And then we can work out the term that we can consider and how we can view their income. Now, the majority of sports people are on contracts. Um, so again, they will be restricted to our contract in product range, but just give us a call, chat it through with us. We've done it. We've considered sports people previously. It's just getting to know a little bit more about them and then we see what their onward plan is post-retirement. Wonderful, thanks Holly. Uh, I know this, but I'm going to ask anyway. What's the minimum deposit for joint borrowers sole, sole ownership case? So minimum is 5%. 
I knew that, but I was going to ask it anyway. Uh, Lisa, <laughs> um, do you do cross charge over parents' property and child's new property, for example? No, so we don't. So we take our, our sole charge will be over the first time buyer's property uh, for our JBSP, for example. So we won't hold a charge on somebody else's property. Um, yeah. Okay, and from Daryl again, uh, do you do buy to let on multiple unit freeholds? Not on the moment, no. So it's on uh, single units or single leasehold properties if it's a flat. Um, we don't do multi units at the moment. Lovely. Lots of, um, I'm just going through the CPD certificates, make sure I haven't missed any questions from you guys. Uh, quite a lot of requests for those. Um, I'm going to ask a favour of the audience, actually. Um, I'm about to send a notification to your uh, chat area, which will send a link to a survey. We would really, really appreciate your feedback on this webinar and any other webinars you've watched. The next season starts, as we say, in the summer in August. So um, we are hoping to develop the next year to be something more in line with what you want and what you need. So it's going to be guided slightly by you. So I really appreciate it if you could complete the survey. Uh, it's coming through to you now. Please don't click off if you have to. We'll open a new window, but please try and stay till the end. Um, and just click on the complete quick survey. It'll open a new window and just answer the quick question for us. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, I'm just going through to make sure I haven't missed any uh, questions there. No, all still just requests. That's absolutely fine. Any more questions? You've got exactly nine minutes left with us. So any more questions, pop it in the chat room, and I will try and get to them before the end. If we don't get to them by the end, um, we don't get to them by the end, we will um, send an email and sort of respond to you. Uh, and we'll give out the de details in a minute. So Lois, but I have a lady wanting four buy to let for business purchase purposes. Your interest rate is quite high um is the room to this is there room to discuss i think it wasn't like that. no so no the the rates are as advertised on that one the bespoke pricing is for cases that are outside our policy and you know for ones that are uh, cases surrounding that so um yeah but we are regularly in review of all of our products we have monthly meetings to review our product ranges so if anything changes being signed up to our updates um via the portal is a great way to know about any changes that we've got upcoming um that doesn't just include product updates and i promise you don't get inundated by emails but what we do send usually tells you a little bit more about any criteria changes um obviously the rate changes but also any uh, service changes with that as well so um it's always one to look out for and we say it's really useful because you know hopefully once our policy review comes out over the next coming months we'll be sending that out as a big email to really share with you the exciting changes that we've got coming forward um so yeah definitely we just talk about that actually which is you brought it up so we just talk about communication and the portal and signing up and the new website and things like that. i think you know we've had many conversation on previous webinars that is really vital to sign up and the communication we send is very succinct so um how much effort has gone into that tony i presume that we have um focused you know that portal area on on what brokers need and what they want to hear yeah yeah so you know the, the 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 new web design was a switch from a from a different service to the new one so it's far more functional for us to be able to adapt and amend um and you know it's good but it's not perfect and we love feedback because we want you know we want to ensure that however you want to get hold of us be it you know soft touch i just want to look at a website or you want to use our web chat or you want it on the phone or you want face to face then that's how we want to deliver to you so that's why all these you know and we do ask for a lot of feedback from people which you know i appreciate at times can be like oh another survey but it is all about helping us help you to get things better so you know we try not to over communicate you know you don't want to be seeing us because as we understand you know most of you will be registered with you know upwards of 50 60 70 lenders and i can imagine the amount of emails that you get so you know but an email from us is generally worth reading because we tend to try and limit it to that and we are looking at our emails and looking at how we can support and make those more interesting for people as well so again uh if we ask you for feedback and you've got something to say please please do tell us but outside of that just give us feedback anyway ring us up send us an email leave a message we really want to know 
just on that, the files that I'm sharing with you at the moment on your screens is the contact details for the BDM team. Uh, so, and all the details are on there, the email, the phone number, the website, everything's on there. Uh, I am sharing it with you. So download, that will download to your computer. It's printable. You can stick it in a folder. So I'm going to stick it up on your wall if you so wish. Um, but all the information is on there. Um, I'm going to ask one last question from Paul. And I'm going to ask a question uh, unrelated to, to what we discussed before. So Paul's asked, in the case of remortgaging to raise equity, do you have restrictions on what that equity has to be used for, i.e. purely reinvestment in property or anything else? Um, so they can, we do allow capital raising for a variety of reasons. So it can be from a property purchase. It can be for home improvements, debt consolidation, a variety of different things. The reasons that we say no to uh, de um, to remortgaging and capital raising is when they're doing raising it for business purposes, paying an inheritance tax bill, or um, gambling for uh, paying back gambling debts and things like that. So, um, yeah. The or any unlawful choice. reason. I just want to stress yeah, that as well. True. Yeah, let's not miss that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't mention what they could be. So moving on. Um, we you mentioned earlier about a about the affordability calculators, Holly. Um, I think it's worth noting that as as a as a lender, you have more than any others, more than most others, and we've got others in the pipeline. Where can they find them? Yep, so they can be found on the Saffron for Intermediaries website. Um, under the calculator section that runs across the pink toolbar under our logo. Um, on there, you'll find our mortgage repayment calculator that you put in the details of the loan amount and the interest rate to work out how much the customer would be paying back uh, on an interest only or repayment basis. You've got the buy to let calculator, which um, handily has all of our products in there. So instead of you having to work out the stress calculation, you can select the certain product and it works it out for you. You've got the JBSP calculator, which is purely for that joint borrower, sole proprietor, first time buyer product. And you've also got our general first uh, affordability calculator. Now you may hear us mention our lending into retirement calculator. That is within the standard affordability calculator. If you click yes to the first question that asks you about, are the applicants going to be retired or over the age of 75 within the mortgage term, that will switch it automatically into a lending into retirement calculator. And once we launch the new calculators on our website, which we will be shouting very loudly about, is our lending into retirement um, has got a much more generous uh, affordability calculation than it had previously. In some of the cases that we have tested, it can lend up to 100,000 to 125,000 pounds more in certain cases. Um, so it's definitely worth running through because that calculator that we'll be launching is exactly the same one that our underwriters use in the background. Uh, so it's a real positive one. So as soon as that's live on our website, we will make sure that we're shouting about it and sending it out. So you'll see it on our emails, our socials, everything like that. If you have missed any of that information, this webinar will be live on YouTube, hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, the system will churn out an email to you um, in 24 hours time and let you know it's available on this platform or you can see it on YouTube. So if you want to review any of that back and have a look back or share it with any of your colleagues or peers, do feel free to share that link. We're happy for them to see it. Um, as we have said, this is the last in this season. We're having a month's break. Well, we're not taking a break. We're coming back. We're taking a break from live. We're coming back with a pre-recorded podcast in July. Uh, give you all a breather from our faces so you'll just hear our voices. So we'll be bringing that to you in July and it'll be a launch date. Uh, it'll be available on all your podcasting platforms, including Apple and Spotify. So more details on that to follow. And so we're back again in August with the next season. So it flips on its head. It'll be a year uh, since we started. So year two will be kicking off with a brand new brand new platform and layout and, and hopefully new subject matters, which is based on you. So if you could click on that complete quick survey link that's available on your screen, complete our survey. You can have a say in what we talk about in the future, which is very exciting. Um, but that's it. Our hour's up. I'm so sorry you didn't get to see Sophie's face. If you do want to see Sophie, head over to our YouTube channel. She was on a webinar two webinars ago, so you will see Sophie on that, and we will get her on in the future. So, Sophie, wherever the technical issues were, I do apologise, uh, but we will get to see you soon. And thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks, Holly. And thanks, uh, Tony, for joining us as always. Thank you, Jay, for hosting as ever. Yeah. Always, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And look forward to August. And we'll let you know about the podcast as soon as it's available. So enjoy the last bit of sunshine before the thunderstorm hits you in those areas Brilliant. of the country. Brilliant. And, um, 
<laughs> we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.